what's it feel like looking at those energy bills? Like looking into the sun, I imagine. But surely it was all worth it to support the current thing and save the planet. Food prices are rising at the fastest pace in 40 years. We're now experiencing shortages of staple vegetables. Many Americans will be forced this winter to choose between putting food on the table and paying their bills. Five million have fled to Mexico to escape rent prices that have soared 25% in two years. In San Diego, my apartment was probably $2,500. Uh, for one bedroom? For a, for a, for a studio. For a studio. Uh, here, I have a one bedroom and I pay $800 a month. The prospect of stagflation looms ominously. And what is the Biden administration doing in response? Telling poor people to weatherize their homes. You can get your home entirely weatherized. Telling them to get embroiled in even more debt by buying solar panels. So solar panels can be financed so you don't have to have the big outcome outlay at the front. Because as everyone knows, solar panels work great in winter. <laughs> Telling them to buy electric vehicles. I'm excited about the electric vehicle provisions because you know, what this will do is reduce the price through tax credits of an electric vehicle. Yeah, slight problem with that. Manufacturers just massively upped the price of electric vehicles, completely wiping out the tax credit. You filled up your EV by charging and you filled up your gas tank with gasoline and you have the same size tank, you would save $60 per fill up by going electric rather than using gasoline. Yes, yeah, slight problem with that too. An electric vehicle costs an average of $67,000 in the first place and rising. If you're in a financial situation where gas prices cause you sleepless nights, how on earth are you possibly supposed to be able to purchase an EV? A lot of people can't afford a $60,000 electric car. And they also are having a hard time affording gas right now. That sounds like a painful transition. And it doesn't matter how many times Wikipedia massages the definition of recession. America is already in one. Already cash-strapped Americans heading into a recession, whacked by runaway inflation, aren't just going to have a spare 67 grand lying around, are they? Sure, the average cost of an electric car might be higher than the median household income in Michigan, but really, should you peasants even be allowed to drive those gas guzzlers anyway? To finally get my electric vehicle, I got it to, and drove it from Michigan to here uh, this last weekend, and went by every single gas station and didn't matter how high it was. And really, shouldn't you be suffering a little pain at the pump for your eco indiscretion? Of course, the more pain we are all experiencing from the high price of gas, the more benefit there is for those who can access electric vehicles. Shouldn't you be forced to make sacrifices for the liberal world order? This is about the future of the liberal world order. Oh, and don't you dare question any of this disastrous green transition, by the way, or you'll face the wrath of the unholy alliance of the Biden administration and big tech. Understanding the values of solar energy, the values of wind energy, the benefits of clean energy. We have to get tighter. We have to get better at communicating. And frankly, the tech companies have to stop allowing specific individuals over and over again to spread disinformation. And besides, wasn't all this Putin's fault anyway? The prices start going up as soon as Putin starts uh, intervening in the energy going up market before in Europe. No, no, they actually weren't. Uh, sure they, they were. were going up. They were going, no, that's just factually not true. Uh, yeah, it is true, and here's a graph proving it. You might be able to get CNN or Wikipedia to change the definition of recession to cover your asses, but you can't censor historical gas price charts. Not yet, anyway. And let's pause there because I have an exciting new video sponsor. It's no exaggeration to say that things are getting scary out there. The Biden administration has already printed more money in the past two years than the previous 100 years combined. The national debt just hit a record $30 trillion. And inflation is the highest we've seen since 1982. If you have retirement savings, your money could be at serious risk. They're basically burning your cash, torching your family's financial future. Are you gonna let them destroy everything you've worked for? Are you just gonna sit back and become a victim of the deliberate decimation of your living standards? Are you just gonna submit and eat the bugs. Ugh, don't do that. Or are you going to take positive action by safeguarding your economic security? Talk to my friends at Gold Co. to see how you can protect your retirement with gold and silver before it's too late. Go to paullikesgold.com.
and they'll give you $10,000 or more in free silver when you open a qualifying account. That's paullikesgold.com. You've seen how much I get demonetized. The best way of supporting me is by supporting my sponsor. So click the link in the description for paullikesgold.com. Now back to the video. In France, they're turning off the street lights. In Spain, indoor air conditioning can't be dropped below 27 degrees Celsius. Right now at the height of summer, still spare a thought for those poor Germans. Their energy crisis is so dire. Governments are having to create warm-up spaces in cities to save people who can't pay their bills from freezing to death this winter. Thermostats in public buildings are being limited to 19 degrees Celsius. Germans are panic buying firewood, stoves and electric heaters, leading to warnings of a total power grid failure and blackouts due to massive over-demand. After initially being told to stop driving their cars, wear warmer sweaters and take fewer showers, Germans are now being told to use washcloths instead. This from the Green Party's Winfried Kretschmann, another outrageously out-of-touch technocrat, who while ordering Germans to scrub themselves with filthy rags, rags about his electric car his, quote, huge photovoltaic system on the roof, and a pellet heating system that is totally unaffordable to the average citizen. Oh yeah, his eco-credentials are beyond question. Uh, except for the fact that the wood pellets that heat his home are sourced from forests in southeastern United States, from chopped down trees that take a hundred years to grow back, then shipped halfway around the world so Kretschmann can boast about how environmentally friendly he is. The vice president of the European Commission ordered citizens to fight Putin by riding bikes instead of driving cars and not washing their clothes as often. Sacrifices Franz Timmermans, who is paid over a quarter of a million dollars a year, won't be making for himself. Despite the fact that 60% of German households are using up all their disposable income simply to cover heating, food and rent, Marie-Agnes Zimmermann Strack says poverty threatened Germans need to make more sacrifices to support the current thing. Easy for her to say given that she enjoys a net worth of about 10 million euros. This is what happens when you wreck your energy independence in support of the current thing. In support of catastrophic net zero green energy policies that are totally unfit for purpose. I mean, look at wind turbines, completely useless. Takes more energy to power them than the amount of energy created by them. And they're not even environmentally friendly. They're manufactured using the chemical sulfur hexafluoride, SF6, which according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is 26,087 times more harmful to the climate than carbon dioxide. This stuff causes carbon dioxide narcosis and respiratory arrest, and they're detecting higher and higher levels of it over, you guessed it, Germany. But it's not enough for arrogant technocrats to constantly lecture worried Germans about their energy use. Those expressing just a little bit too much concern are now being demonised as domestic extremists. The Interior Minister of the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia Herbert Rule monstered people planning to protest against coming energy blackouts as, quote, enemies of the state who want to overthrow the government. Get fucked. Yeah, I'm sure the single mother cautiously lighting her last candle after the power company cut off her supply as she frantically wraps up her baby trying to keep it warm isn't really concerned about the blackouts. She's actually a dangerous right-wing conspiracy theorist who wants to initiate regime change. Another top official, Stephen Kramer, says this winter's energy riots will make anti lockdown protests look like a children's birthday party in comparison. He foresees civil unrest on a massive scale. Social disorder is also brewing in Britain, where there's a growing movement for people to simply cancel their direct debits and stop paying their bills altogether. Energy bills are expected to soar to over £6,500 by next April. That's six times what they were earlier this year. For millions upon millions of people, that's simply unaffordable over a third of the country will slide into poverty. EDF's Philippe Comeray says Britain faces a dramatic and catastrophic energy crisis in the coming months. Some are even calling for the government to freeze energy bills for two years at a cost of £100 billion. It all seems to be pointing in the direction of utter chaos. Campaigner Tom Scott is predicting widespread civil unrest on a par with the poll tax riots. Because in sheer frustration at being unable to afford to live, 
Brits will take their anger to the streets. A poll also found that a majority of Brits, 51%, think there will be cost of living riots later this year. Globalist Great Reset technocrats admit that they're obsessed with forcing you to stomach the green transition. At the Department of Energy, we are really obsessed with how we get to net zero by 2050. EU technocrat Diedrich Sampson let slip the truth when he stated, quote, energy will be more expensive as of now. Energy was way too cheap for the last 40 years, and in order to save the planet, quote, we need to pay more for energy, and also for food. Oh, they'll continue to live like kings, don't worry about that, while you shiver under your blanket nibbling on your bug rations. Author Thomas Farsi warns civil disobedience is coming. As economic policies have become tailored to the interests of a handful of immensely powerful mega corporations, any sense of the collective or national interest was lost. A small elite was allowed to accrue immense wealth and power while laying waste to our society's workforce, industrial capacity, public services and vital infrastructures, leaving our countries poorer, weaker and dependent on foreign and increasingly hostile nations for the supply of everything from energy to food to basic medical supplies. Winter is coming, and without doubt, it's going to be a winter of discontent. How are you preparing for the potential financial bedlam that is waiting around the corner? I'll be reading your responses in the comments below. <laughs>